What have the French done with the FAMAS rifle? The next generation version looks like a Frankenstein MOS. They slapped on top a massive thermal sight and a close quarters EOTech. Sure, this adds capabilities like being able to fire around corners. It also doubles the weight and makes the weapon bulky to handle. In this episode, I wanna know everything about the FAMAS rifle, its history, and why the French army is planning on saying au revoir to it. I'm Chris Cappy, welcome to the channel. France has a hardcore military history. The main rifle they wield in battle is a unique looking bullpup called the FAMAS. Ooh la la, that's a beautiful gun. The French are the ones who really pioneered the bullpup rifle design from the get-go. And when you think about it, isn't it just like them? To see how everyone else in the world is creating firearms and then they say, uh, let's do it le opposite. It might come as a surprise, but this rifle has seen heavy combat across all of the Middle East and Africa. See, I grew up in the United States hearing jokes about how the French military always gives up, they always surrender right away. I'm sure you've heard the stereotypes, but in reality, this couldn't be further from the truth. I bet you didn't know the French army has actually been fighting in the country of Mali against insurgents since 2012. And all the reports in the field say the same thing that the FAMAS has been kicking ass. So the weapons factory that created every single one of these rifles traces its lineage all the way back to a famous military weapons town in France called Saint Etienne. And this place was the place to go back in 1665 if you needed a top quality next generation sword. Anyone who's anyone got their steel from there, even Carl. The same factory producing the FAMAS rifle for battle in Afghanistan in modern times is also the same place that made the muskets for Napoleon Bonaparte's Grand Armée back then in the 1800s. The look of the weapon is very distinct. It's got that undeniable French aesthetic about it. the FAMAS has a kind of je ne sais quoi about it. Did I use that right? The delayed blowback design and placing the magazine and the action behind the trigger is kind of ingenious. It shortens the overall length of the weapon while maintaining the barrel length. And it's one of the last major new ideas to successfully transform the principles behind the way semi-automatic weapons work. The backwards driving force from the cartridge case pushes the bolt back, then the fulcrum rotates which unlocks the bolt. During this time delay, pressures drop down and the cartridge is extracted. Before we get into the next generation upgraded, savage, beast mode version of the FAMAS, let's talk about the initial problems that the rifle had. So the original version had a ton of plastic pieces that easily broke off, including the cheek pad. It malfunctioned often because of poorly built disposable magazines that were often reused. You had one job disposable magazine to be disposed of, and here you are being reloaded time and time again. Then there was the problems of the weapon being really finicky about the type of ammo fired. It only fired correctly when shooting the French steel cased ammo cartridges instead of the NATO ones. Don't put the crude American ammo in me. They only allowed 25 round magazines because designers thought 30 round magazines would make it difficult to fire from the prone position. The effort to fix all of these problems were considered largely successful and it all culminated in the French army creating a new iteration of the FAMAS for the modern technological advanced age. This effort is called the feline system. Meow, sorry. It's similar to the US Army's $2 billion land warrior system, which has been trying to integrate optics with a headset for over 20 years now. Look at how ridiculously bulky the thermal sight is on top of that lightweight, tiny 5.56 rifle. I would love to be the person sitting in on the weapons development meeting when someone was like, uh, I don't know, General, can't we add something more? How do the Americans put it? Go big or go home? So they toss an EOTech close quarters sight on top of an already huge thermal sight. This imaging system is really interesting because it works with a wireless video camera, which relays the sight images over to a local network, which then transmits them to the platoon commander so they can see what their troops are seeing. How's that for situational awareness? Apparently my assessment runs contrary to popular opinion in France because the soldiers there swear by the feline FAMAS setup. They say that the thermal sights and EOTech work very effectively in the field. French soldiers run their kit this way all the time. 
Okay, so obviously I'm having a little bit of fun here with poking fun at the thermal sight. In reality, only one soldier per squad would be outfitted with this very specialized tool, so I think it does make a lot of sense. The FAMAS began development in 1967, and they refused to have their country's weapons developed by the German manufacturers at the time in the 60s, and I can't think of a single reason why France wouldn't want Germany in control of their entire military firearm industry. French General Paulet Tellier oversaw the manufacture and creation of their own homemade first prototype completed in 1971. Everyone looked at the finished rifle and were like, what? Bullpups were relatively new and untested at the time. The lightweight 5.56 rifles are common today, but they were kind of alien then. So the bullpup quickly caught on with the French army. And after it worked out all of its initial quirks, the FAMAS was actually loved by troops there. It fired at a high rate of fire, 1,100 rounds per minute. That was incredibly high. That's a lot more than the M4, for instance. I like to compare everything to the M4. Most regular line unit French soldiers weren't actually encouraged to shoot on fully automatic though. Just like how the US Army always discourages troops from shooting off burst ammo. <laughs> me for wanting to waste a few rounds, right? C'est la vie. It costs about $1,600 once you convert to USD. And don't worry about leaving a tip that offends them. Weighing in at a grand total of 7.9 pounds, it has a 19 inch barrel, which is five inches more than the M4 and the overall length is still four inches shorter than the M4. Cappy, what are you saying about my fellow French army soldiers? I'm sorry, and who are you? I'm Legionnaire Braxton of the French Foreign Legion, stationed in Mali, Africa. While most of you Americans sit at home cracking jokes about how the French are pretentious and we surrender, I'm out here murking bad dudes left and right with my FAMAS. You don't sound French though. Excellent point. You see, the French Foreign Legion is a unique commando unit that's been around since the 1800s. We accept recruits from all over the world. And the best part is, we don't give a f who you are. Criminal past, welcome aboard. Running from Interpol? Start running for PT. Did too many drugs and woke up in a Texas prison smelling like armadillo piss? That's fine, no problem. Here's the FAMAS, start shooting, no questions asked. That's oddly specific. I feel like a lot of people have no idea how badass the French army really is. French Foreign Legion out. So one of the most controversial capabilities of the FAMAS is the rifle grenade feature, which can be used as a anti-tank weapon. If you ask me, the French still have some residual trauma from tanks and World War II. They want those anti-tank weapons to be organic to the rifle. So you can place a 500 gram grenade on top of the muzzle and then fire around into the grenade primer, which sends it flying into the enemy. The reason people are iffy on it is because the system is notoriously inaccurate. There are some rumors of firing the rifle grenades destroying the barrel of the rifle, but those are kind of unsubstantiated. It has a special bullet catching device so you can fire live ammo straight into the grenade instead of having to carry around blanks. Yes, the APAV-40 rifle grenade that the FAMAS fires is strong enough to destroy a T-55 tank's armor. However, you're probably wondering, why don't the French use the M203 like the Americans do? And I think I know the reason why because the M203 would be horribly unbalanced under a FAMAS rifle. All of that aside, I think I would be hesitant to use the rifle grenade. Wait, Sergeant, uh, start over again. Go from the part where you want me to fire a bullet into what? Straight into the back of the grenade. It's 2021, there has to be a better way to do this. The French army loved the FAMAS so much, they nicknamed it Le Clarion, after the musical instrument it looks like. My own nickname for it is Le Omelette du FAMAS. This video will sadly be a farewell send off to the FAMAS because it's going to be replaced by the French army by the HK416. The French weapons factory, the one that I was talking about earlier, the Saint Etienne weapons factory that produced all these rifles and all of Napoleon Bonaparte's weapons, well, that's now been made defunct and it's been turned into a museum in 2001. Replacement parts and issues with continuing to maintain the FAMAS has become very difficult since then. So this meant that the French army needed to either find a new company that would make repairs, upgrades, and create new FAMAS rifles, or they could go with a company that already had a system in place for a different weapon completely. It only took like seven decades after World War II for France to be cool with Germany finally making their weapons, so the FAMAS might have its days numbered, 
but it will always be remembered for being one of the first bullpup rifles ever adopted by a NATO country. Please make sure that you subscribe because 65% of you are out there lurking, watching these videos from the shadows, completely unsubscribed, living off the grid. Everyone over at the Task and Purpose Discord channel took a look at an early cut of this video and they helped find errors and mistakes. I really appreciate the help from you guys. Go over to the Discord channel if you're interested in taking a look at early cuts of the video. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Task and Purpose out.